Hello guys and welcome to part 2 of the satisfying Blender animation tutorial we've been doing. If you haven't already seen part 1 where we do the modeling, the physics and all that sort of stuff, you can go check it on my channel. But in this part we're going to be adding some materials and some lights and I'll be rendering in cycles. Now as you can see here, um, it's like I said in part 1, it's not too polished. The idea here is just to make something fun and satisfying. Okay, this is not a perfect animation by all means, but it's just something that's relatively beginner friendly and something I know you guys will enjoy overall. And I will be making the blend files available on my Patreon as well. Okay, I said enough, so let's get started with part two. Okay, so now that we're in part two, we can get started with the materials. Before we got our camera, our scene, everything like that set up. So let's start by going to our render properties. And I'm going to change the render engine to Cycles, right? Because I'm working in Blender 3.0, it's worth it. Cycles X is a lot faster. And if you have a GPU, I would recommend you enable it. And then I'm going to go to my denoising and I'm going to go to render and I'm going to change it to optics. Now we get the optics denoising as well. And before, because we're using Cycles, let's also just go Control B, click here and then drag over the camera view. And that's going to constrain any rendering to the camera so we don't have it rendering all over the viewport. It's going to just um, speed things up a little bit for us. We're now going to go Shift A. We're going to go over to our light options. Add in an area light and then just move it up about here. Go to your light settings and I'm going to go with a strength of 150 and in a size of 3 meters. So now if we hit Z and we go rendered, we're going to see that's what we have. I'm then gonna maybe move it over just a little bit so it's not directly above the cube and then R to rotate it. Then I'm gonna go Shift D to move one over here and then R to rotate it in towards the cubes here. Then I'm gonna go to my top view, Shift D, just one more and I'm gonna have it coming off from the side here. So we just have these three lights. So one that's just giving a bit of light at the back here but then these two main front lights that's making sure everything here at the front is properly lit. You can also come to your world and you can just bring the strength or the value here up just a little bit, but don't go too bright. Okay, so just a little bit brighter on the value. Maybe like a mid-range on the gray is fine. Okay, cool. Now we have that done. Let's go over to our shading workspace and let's um, select the, the outer box thing. Okay, and let's hit Z, go into our rendered workspace and then click new to make a material for that. So let's go over to the tab here and just, just click on it. Let's call it metal. So it's a metal material. And let's just come here and type in, so let's go Shift A, click on the search and type in noise. And let's get a noise texture. Now go to edit, preferences, go to add-ons and then come up here and just type in node. And then make sure your node wrangler add-on is enabled. If you've done that, you can select your noise texture, then hit Control T and it'll automatically add in a mapping and a texture coordinate. So now we can take the color and plug it into the base color of our principal BSDF. Just make sure the object is plugged into the vector of the mapping node. So that just tells the noise texture how to distribute itself across the surface here procedurally. So let's come over here to our scale as well. We're going to make it 25 on the top and 25 at the bottom. We're then going to come over here and we're going to go Shift A, search, type in color, and we're going to get a color ramp and place it on the cable between our noise texture and our principled. And we're going to drag the black value up and then bring the white value down. But with the white value here selected, we're going to make it darker in value. And once we have something that looks like that, we're going to drag the metallic slider all the way up to one and then the roughness down a bit. So now we have this kind of scratched metal kind of look. Grab the black value here and just make it a little bit lighter. So kind of making the scratch steel look. Let's just move these two nodes over here. Shift A, search and type in bump. And this is optional, but if you type in bump and you get a bump node, plug the color into the height. And now we can take this normal output and feed it into the normal input of our principled shader. So now we have some bump. But let's come to our strength and make it point free. Okay, that's looking like a pretty cool material. So let's just select our inner part here, this part here, and we're gonna just come to the drop down and give it that metal material. And that's looking pretty cool. Not a thing you can do real quick if you want, it's optional, but you can come and select this outer bit again. Click on the plus up here, go new to create a new material. Let's just call it gold. 
And let's just go into edit mode, go to face select, shift, alt, and then click on a edge here to loop select these faces. And let's just assign that gold material. And then select this part here and then select the app, this face here. Control plus to greater selection a few times. And then assign, click the plus here, come to the drop down, make it at gold and assign that to the front face there. Now you can come here to the gold, make it a nice golden material, make it metallic and bring down that roughness a bit. Tab out, hit Z and go into rendered mode. And now we can see we have this kind of goldish material here. Uh, make it look like actual gold if you want by messing around with it, but something like that looks fine. It just gives a little bit of contrast and it's something I quite like. Let's just select our floor in our world, click new. And um, this is called ground. And this one I'm just gonna make simply dark with a little bit of blue in there. And I'm gonna make it metallic and I'm gonna bring down the roughness a bit. Hit Z, go rendered. And now you're gonna see we have that nice dark floor there, uh, which looks pretty cool. Maybe even bring the roughness down just so we get a little bit of reflection coming in there. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. So maybe just a bit lighter. Okay. So with that done, let's select one of our glass shards and you're gonna see it already has a material because we used our default cube. The default cube comes with its own default material. So all of these little fragments will have its own material. So let's just call that material glass. So they're all now gonna share that glass material. And all we're simply gonna do is come here to the transmission and we're gonna make it all the way up to one. And we're gonna drag this roughness down almost to zero. Now, if you're working in EV and you have the EV settings enabled, let's just make us EV, you have to make sure you have screen space reflections enabled and make sure to enable refraction. Then under your materials for that glass, you need to make these alpha hashed and the bottom one alpha hashed and enable screen space reflections. Otherwise, you're not gonna get this transmission to show. But I'm gonna be using cycles, so I'm gonna keep it at cycles. So now, if we hit Z and we go rendered, we're gonna see that's kind of its own glass material. If we hit the spacebar to play the animation, you can kind of see it here. Looks pretty good, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here to the color and make it slightly bluish, like that. If you want to, you can kind of do what I did with my original, one of the ones I was practicing with where I just put a noise texture in there as well and I just gave it a color ramp exact same thing we did with the metal but I just didn't mess around with these scale settings and I just changed the two colors to something that I liked so very simple material very very easy to do so you guys can go and add those nodes in here if you want so you can get this sort of effect that I have here um, but honestly it looks pretty good just with a solid blue material like that so you don't want to go too saturated but just something like that looks pretty cool. So now, make sure to save everything. Let's quickly, I feel like this might need a little bit of extra light. So I'm just gonna go Shift A. I'm gonna go to my light options and just add in a point light. I'm gonna go G and just move it up and back behind here. I'm gonna just go to my light settings and increase this, the radius and then the strength a little bit. Hit Z, go render it. And with this one, just move it up a bit. Shift D to duplicate it. I just feel like I wanna add some of these lights behind here just for some nice rim lighting, just to make it pop from the dark background. So uh, just something like that. Mess around with it, play around with the radius, but just a little trick like that for getting that to just stand out a little bit better. Maybe move it back a bit. Um, completely, you know, work with it. Try, see what works for you. Maybe duplicate it at the front here. Um, lighting is completely one of those things where it's your, your own creativity. Whatever you feel makes or breaks your scene um, is up to you. So there's no real rule with lighting in my opinion. It's really um, personal preference. Though there are some general guidelines, I really think it's up to you to kind of experiment. So now that we have some lights here, um, let's go to a layout and let's just randomly move here through here till we get a nice scene that we like or a nice position on our time timeline. Make sure to save and let's quickly go render and then render the image. 
And because we have the optics denoising enabled and we're rendering with cycles X, this should be pretty quick and it also should denoise our image here. And there we have it. That only took 37 seconds in my case, but it looks pretty good and very little noise with the optics denoiser. And that has been how to make this um, satisfying animation. So what you can do if you want to render this out as an animation, it's very simple. You go to your output settings, you go down to output, click on a folder, select somewhere, for example, my desktop. It could be anywhere you want on your system. You can make it PNGs and then compile them in like Adobe After Effects or something. But for me, I'm just gonna make it FFmpeg video. I'm gonna to go to my encoding and I'm gonna make the container an MP4. You can pick these other ones if you want, but an MP4 really is uh, my favorite go-to. Make sure to save, and then you can go render and render animation. And it should render that out to your chosen location, and you should have a final animation. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be making these blend files available on my Patreon. It really does help support the channel as well. And I hope you guys are able to use this, improve upon it, make something cool. And I'll see you next time for another Blender tutorial.